Okay, it's uh, about one after five, uh, Wednesday, November 4th, 2020, and we're going to start the Town of Sangerville Board of Selectmen meeting, and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, item two, approval of the minutes. A, select board workshop 10 9 2020, select board special meeting 10 21 2020, and select board emergency meeting 10 23 2020. Make a motion to approve A, B, and C as read. Second. All in favor? We all three vote in favor. Item three, review the treasurer's warrants, payroll 86, 88, accounts payable 87. Make a motion to approve A and B as read. Second. One favor? No. Um, Pausing. Lorna told me those numbers, and I just want to verify that she was right. 86, 88, and 87. 86, She is not right. <laughs> this is 87. She said the AP warrant would go through first because it was started first. So. So it should be payroll? It's the same thing. Just it's the same numbers. Just, um, payroll is 86 and 87, and um, accounts, payable. accounts payable is 88. Okay. And I never did, I apologize, I never did. All right. So uh, reviewing, uh, A, payroll 86, 87, accounts payable 88. Second that one. Second. All in favor? We're all in favor again. Uh, open session, we have no guests. Um, old business proposal for the layout for the town office. Okay, so Nick did get very nice drawings. Um, they were back to us. They're hung on the wall. Um, some people saw them, some didn't. It was amazing. I didn't hear a lot of people, but um, we had somebody have the library door open so we could uh, send traffic out that way, and they said they heard a lot of grumbling. <laughs> didn't have any any idea why we needed <laughs> a new building. They hadn't been paying attention enough to know that there was issues. Yeah, well, there building. was only, what, 65 people at the town meeting? Yeah. That, so so um, they might again, not know I any of it. I spoke to one constituent who said they liked the idea of moving it down to the Veterans Memorial Park. Um, other than that, I don't have much feedback on those. I did talk to a few other people. It's been mentioned that if we go down to the park, we won't be able to have, likely be able to have three driveways. It'll have to be two. Um, something to think about. I did hear back from Doug Haskell, because uh, I called him about the well that's, uh, it, that's there in front of the cook shack. He said that somebody in Guilford donated the money, Haskell well drilling, drilled it. They drilled down 35 feet and then had water gushing everywhere, yes. so they didn't go any further. It was only meant to be a hand pump mm -hmm. situation at any time. However, they never got it to pass a water test. Ah. So, because it's all groundwater, they didn't go far yeah, it's not deep enough. enough. It didn't go deep enough. It drilled right in the swamp. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, that's, so then well, that's well, kind of well. That's kind of interesting that, that we is, now know that, though. Yeah. So I think we really ought to. What do we want to do about that? We got a well that doesn't has never passed that we're using. Yeah, our well, kids then, drinking that water? No, they oh, had a oh. they had a hand pump on it for a while. And it was all locked up, and then some I can't remember what group decided that we needed a ice rink, but somebody did. They took the pump off, made their ice rink. The pump disappeared. So then it was open, and um, many years of kids have dropped rocks into the well, and you have about 10 feet of space. Yeah, there's only 35 feet to begin and, with, yeah. And <laughs> it's pretty so well. Really so the case, well. that's what I'm saying, but the, yeah. Yeah, that case, so the fact that it didn't... Yeah, the case probably ought to just be pulled. Yeah. And you fill the hole and not worry about it. Yeah, probably. But the, the whole idea of a usable well is not... Right. There's, there's no, no well. There is no well. There is no well. There is no well. There really and then never was. I talked to Cree Knapp 
um, who does a lot of site designs for septic systems. Just briefly, because I was um, down in the middle. She said, when you figure a building like this, you have to have 15 gallons per employee. And then um, it's somewhere between three to five gallons for other usage, like the number of people at a board meeting. So four people times three or times five. Or planning board might have an extra, extra mm -hmm. person. That would have to be planned in. If you add the library, there'll be another minimum um, mm -hmm. addition, <coughs> which will mean that you'll need a bigger system. If you decide to have town meeting there, you would have to have, I don't know the, she didn't know the figure and I don't know the actual figure I was looking for before the meeting. Um, you'd have to have a peak usage right. figure and that would add to the size of your... Another reason not to do town meeting. Yeah, anything. that's true. That's a good point. And I think, oh, the other thing is I got some numbers from the library. This is the report they handed out at their last meeting. <coughs> it doesn't have much for numbers. The librarian gave me numbers for 2019. Um, patrons. They had in, patrons and visitors. They had um, 1,925 people all year. And, well, and then you have to add 352 kids to that. No, th whoops. But those are not, those are not unique patrons. No, that's, no, those are not unique. That's total oh, visits. That, that's, that's just total visits. visits. Right. Yeah, okay. When I was looking for something else in old town records that I, I had to have an answer for, I found all these old library reports. We used to have 10,000. Wow. Peak, well, 98, 9,900. How many days a week is the library open? It's now open two days a week. But I mean, in, for, ni for 19, when would that have been? Four. Four days a week? Yes. 20 hours. So, um, and then, yeah. And what, so what's up with the children? Chil there were 352 children who, who came in, uh, above and beyond the uh -huh. 19. But that's 352 children visitors, not 352. Correct. Not 352. It definitely wasn't 352 individual children. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and then right. they had, uh, right. it says here that they only had um, 833 books and or videos taken out for adults and 157 for kids. So they can't drop this into a place so you can say out of the 352 that was 25 people or? They cannot, although when I ha was having a casual conversation with the librarian, after they were closing down to two days a week, she said, I gotta call three people and let them know. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Those are, I think those are all the numbers that I managed to work on since our last meeting. Well, just to get an idea, if you had five individual patrons mm -hmm. and they uh, made five visits a week for either a video or a book, that gets you to 1300 a year. Okay. Okay. So yep. you can leverage yep. that in either direction. Yep. If you double that, if you had 10 individual patrons and they had the same pace, that would actually exceed the number of 1,900 by quite a margin. Right, yeah. As far as children go, we already know they're already all members of the Guilford Library. If they're in this SAD. Is it right? Yeah. Oh, they I didn't know that. They oh. have free membership to the Guilford Library. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So even though 1,900 may sound like quite a few distributions, it might not actually be that many individual people right. that are... Stuff. Utilizing the service. Right. It's actually probably not many at all. I bet it isn't. I get, well, I, I mean, I, well, the other extreme would be. I always want to say that myself personally. In and out of this building, as many times as I am, you can kind of see the same faces going in and out of there. And pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think your numbers are probably pretty accurate as you've got a small percentage of people that are and in and out of there a lot. Frequently visited. Yeah. I, it shouldn't be much of a task to give us an idea what how many unique patrons there are. I'll try again. Yeah. Well, I, every time I ask, I don't get that exact <laughs> piece of information. It's all right. Well, I mean, we, we, we can do our own math. Yeah. But. Well, if you 
you. I looked at Guilford, Dexter, and Dover. I think two of them were 20 a year for uh, a library card if you're not a citizen, and one was 15. So what's 1,300 it, times 20? 20, 2,600. Well, think about it this way. Yeah? For 1,925 patron visits, that's costing you ten dollars and thirty nine cents per visit. Wow. Wow. That's actually it. gone down because back when I was treasurer I figured it out long and it was like eleven something. But I'm just saying, I mean <laughs> yeah. the town gives twenty thousand dollars, you divide twenty thousand by nineteen twenty five. So it, it costs the taxpayers. Ten dollars and thirty nine cents for every time one person walks for that amount right, of people. Right. It, yeah. Every single one of those visits was a unique person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It would cost you, you you would you might have an argument that we save money. If if it's half that, we're just as well off to pay for the and we know it's not. Well what's the membership? It's, what it's probably what the membership people. to Guilford Library? Well, Bridie's just 20. said twenty bucks. So that we don't have a thousand unique Pretty patrons. Right. No. No. We don't have a fraction of that. And and are some of these people on foot, or do they all come by vehicle? I mean, it, it, is it a hardship if we said... I think the building next door comes in by foot. Mm -hmm. and Which makes sense, I mean. Um, that's about it. Yeah. What did you say the number was for movies? I don't think she... I mean, you see a lot of that. I see a lot yeah. of people coming in. Well, and when we closed, that was one of the things. Yeah, no, I, I've already more. heard that was the videos were... For sure. Bobby, this is their it. entertainment. Oh, well, blockbusters. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I know she has that number, but I can't tell you which one of these it is. It's not the. It's not the big one. You know, it's not the. I think it's probably the two sixty eight. Where I think this is important is if we ever get to the place where we're presenting the new town office to the citizens, mm -hmm. because I think we've basically come to the conclusion that we don't even need a second floor if we don't have the library and that's so so yeah we've got our twenty thousand dollar year budget but we're also probably got you know forty fifty sixty thousand dollars worth of construction costs mm -hmm. that you know I mean, we would literally be uh, hundreds of years of library yeah. service or, or maybe you'd still stay with your two floor but you would have a smaller footprint because you could have correct. storage right, down right. in the basement yep yep, yep. I mean, like everybody's. I'm not so sure I agree, but everybody says how oh, you have to have the five foot cross wall. So you're already paying for that anyway. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not costing that really any money, much money difference to go from a slab to go to a to a full foundation. You just make the overall footprint. Right. Right. Make right. Your, yeah. Instead of having a room upstairs as your vault or your storage or whatever, make your footprint smaller and put that downstairs. That's the thing I forgot to write down in terms of vaults. Our list of that we get from main archives that tells us legally what we have to keep and what we don't have to keep. Mm -hmm. Says we legally have to have a vault. And but I'll, doesn't define what a vault is? I will check the statute. It, That's it, say, it says vault, but it. Yeah. So. Did, and, uh, what does Parkman have? <laughs> no, you don't. What, not what we consider a vault. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, most people, most towns don't. Um, no. They right. have. Um, Dexter has a vault because they're in an old bank. Right. But I, I, I would be surprised if Newport has a vault. It's yeah. just basically yeah, looking may, at it. They, they, may might have have a, they may have a room with like double layer of fire. Right, it's fire resistant. Yeah. So Cheap rock. Yeah. Rock yeah. The materials, you know, an exterior solid. door on the interior for protection that way. Mm -hmm. Right. But I don't, there's a difference between trying to do something like that to go into a bank vault. Right, Correct. right. It's more around fire protection than theft. Correct. Yeah. Right. Which makes yeah, total sense. I, mean, I don't know why anybody would steal. I might, I suppose, but. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure it applies to all municipalities. I'm, mm -hmm. yeah. I would be surprised if. In terms of money in the vault, we take. Yeah, we take everything daily, and so. Deposit it. Yeah. yeah. Probably the most valuable thing that's in the vault, as far as that goes, is the the reg the plates and the. Mm, exactly. That's right. I mean, that's yeah. the bigger liability. And that's why, and that's why they're that. locked up. Yep. Right. 
But for example, in a medical office, a doctor's office, I mean, those charts are as as um, sensitive um, to security and and privacy, and Absolutely. they're just in a you know in the file cabinet to lock. Right. That's that. You have and to make it. Fireproof. Yeah, you got to make a sincere attempt to protect those right. documents. Right. Right. But it's not for dogs. Right. And okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think the Guilford Medical Building had a legit vault. No. And I'm sure Guilford didn't. And now with medical, I mean, so, yeah. you know, it, it's even moved on from when I yeah. know yeah. that information. So, but. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So maybe the, back to the library for a minute. Uh, you know, maybe we're we're slowly, we're not so slowly, moving towards budget season. Maybe that's when we really vet this thing. Ask them to come. Yeah, in. yeah I'm with you. I mean, not looking at these numbers, whether or not we get going to do anything different with the building or not. But They're this is a lot of money. Nineteenth, mm -hmm. I think. Um, chairman of the board told me that's when they were going to look there budget together. Okay. Um, anything more on the town office tonight? Uh, B, fire department action plan. I spoke with Chad Burgess yesterday. He had time to come in and we had about an hour to meet. Um, most of what we were going over was, was, excuse me, most of what we went over pertained to his wife being perhaps secretary, treasurer, taking their notes, um, and setting up the computer system for us. I'm making the argument that computer setup, I would like to pay her as a contracted person, and in terms of um, secretary, treasurer, he was talking about saying, you know, a maximum of four hours a month for, that's two meetings, the minutes. Do they really need a treasurer? No, I mean, what what she's going to be doing is putting the um, scanning the documents, and Lorna's going to be doing the, the payroll, and they have no other. And once it's set up, they it's... have no other. So it's a secretary position. But why? But as far as scanning the documents and everything else, all you do is walk them across the street. Yep, either you way. don't need to scan. I mean, they and scan them over the... there and they send them electronically over no, here? No, they don't. They, oh. don't. They, <laughs> <laughs> they go through them and turn them in. And the last two times, Lauren and I have both been a fair chunk of time going over them going, this isn't right. I just, I just think we're, for what this is, I think it's way too clunky. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if all they got to do is a timesheet and they can just give it to you and our girls take care of it. Then you know it's right. They're going to. We're going to. But as far as the treasurer goes, there is no treasurer there because we right. use SAP. The bills come to you, it goes in our system, and that's, we don't need a treasurer. No. He was using that title, but we don't. They, they don't, don't have it. The only group that might need a treasurer would be Friends of the Sangamo Fire Department, which is not a town. Which isn't affiliated with the town. Which is not a town mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with us. Correct. Mm -hmm. But as far as the fire department goes, we don't need a secretary, we don't need a And any, any infrastructure around the Friends of Sangamon Fire Department isn't part of the no. Sangamon budget? No. No. So. Although it was addressed in the ordinance in terms of... The original ordinance. The original ordinance in terms of equipment or those kind of things that are... You know, bought for the town. I mean, and well, that's my other piece about it is I understand, you know, my... I understand the theory that you have a, a group that's the friends of the department that want to do things to benefit the department, but when they, when they purchase a piece of equipment and they donate that to the department... You have to approve that donation, I would think. I, no, I think we already do. It's already part, it's already part of the process mm -hmm. through that ordinance. So, but that liability of maintaining that then becomes part of us afterwards. That you don't have to say. So I mean, if they donate, you know what I'm saying. If they donate a piece of equipment, and it becomes their property over there, then the town's kind of on the hook to keep it maintained and keep it in operation after that. How much does? Uh, well, we or we don't know how much money they make. No idea. With that, well, <laughs> if 
they're not for profit, they should be filing paperwork, and you, we should have, be able to access that online. Should just be able to pop it up. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll look. I last time I looked, nothing popped up. But nope, I've never seen nothing. Either. It's an interesting, I mean, they're using town equipment and, you know, our trucks, they're wearing town gear and they're collecting money. And I think probably, I know when I throw it in the boot, whether I'm in Dexter or Dover, I think I'm helping the town's fire department. Right. But I don't know that you are. No, you're not. And so I'm not sure that that's... You know, I mean, maybe it's a good way to exercise and drill. You get your equipment out and clean it up. I'm, I'm not sure the rationale, but um, you're really using town property yeah, and for a uh, personal gain. Gain, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they send in the mail to us is that also friends of fire. You know what that fundraising? Well, I got one, and it was. Is that what it said? One? No, never got one. It recently got one. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. But it doesn't say anywhere on it say friends of I think it, it did. It did it yeah, does? It did. Yeah. It yeah, in fact it, But uh, the envelope going back doesn't. Oh, I can't remember. I'll have to look at it because I have it right on my desk. Because I noticed uh, it uh, it wasn't you know. hand signed, but it was signed by Wanda. Okay. Uh, I have to look at it again. But, I yeah, but here, here, here is so right. here's the thing. But if I give a donation, I, I, it, they need to be tax exempt because if we, if I donate it and I write it off, you can't write it off unless they're a five hundred one. That's right. Great. And I didn't, well, I didn't notice. Is there any small print on that document? I have I to can't look say. at it again. But, you know, it may say we're not. Right. Representing Sangamo Fire. That, that may have said, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it does. But I'll read it again. It's right on my desk. Did you, did you just? Yeah, I just, I just noted it. Uh, yeah. But no, yeah. We, did, I, we didn't respond to it. Yeah. And they stick a stamp on it to mail back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm assuming that's all volunteerism. Right. I mean, where did that stamp come from? You know yeah, what who's mean? paying the postage? Who's, who's is someone paying? billing the right. hours of stuff envelopes? I don't know that. Yeah, uh, I would. I would hope not. And you know, if one of our citizens isn't getting one, Dale, I've never got one. Well, I mean, but you have a right to mail them whoever you want. They can send them to whoever they want to. Right. I suppose. But yeah. Mile, I do. I think it's kind of false advertising that you send something that, especially if an officer. Signs of the it. department is signing off on that because yeah. it, it's like you said, it's very easy for people to think that you're donating to the I always center. thought I was until I became aware of this. I always, years and years and years, that I've written a check to that. I always thought it was right. I, I did too. I think yeah. you began until, years ago. Until it really a couple years ago. Saying the fire department. But I'm not. But I'm not section. The other say I'm not singling out Sangerville because yeah, yeah. I've I've put yeah. money in the boot in other towns. Yeah. And and made the same assumption. I don't know how they operate. They may be different than us. They may be the same. Yeah. I, don't know. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. It's just an interesting thing. And then this year they included a magnet that fire, and who you know who paid for that? Did they pay you know, from our budget? You know what I'm saying? I mean. Well, it's they're just promotional materials, uh, you know, like, but I, I, what I are you promoting? I haven't seen any bills for promotional materials or yeah. stamps or... You haven't seen any of that stamps. Yeah, so it must have been just the friends of did everything. Oh. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Perhaps they used the copier over there. That I don't know. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, but we've had this conversation before because we've had people... People in the group of friends of that are wearing the same uniforms as our firefighters, so really they're representing your town, but they're, they're not firefighters. They're not firefighters. Oh boy! So it definitely is a little clunky. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So they have donated equipment with those funds back to the town in the past. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which that's cool. Yeah. I think they bought some of the chairs and tables and. I don't know what the last. Yeah, I almost think the Texas Hold'em tables that are upstairs are actually theirs. 
mirrors of the fire departments, one or the other, from back when they used to do that. <laughs> so. Okay. But anyway, moving forward, I think um, Chad and I will work well together, and um, we had a good conversation. We need to think about. Um, is that ordinance ready for me to send to legal? If I send it to MMA first, it is basically there. Oh. Um. We haven't looked at it in a while. Do you want to look at it again next? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. mail it to us. Yeah. Email it to us yeah. and yeah. School over we'll generate questions and. Um, was that the one that was very pared down? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. We, yeah, that's what we want. But Do we want to address uh, Friends of in our ordinance? There is no reference to Friends of in the ordinance. Not in our new ordinance. So, I mean, I'm the guy, that's what I'm asking. Do we want to address that sort of issue? Just leave it alone. It's fine. Um, well, when we get it, we can read it. I don't yes. know what might what we might want to tweak. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had some time to... You know, and Chad it. and I know the other members, they've seen that. Nobody's said anything to you because... I, I will mean, send it to them again because I gave it to Jerry to hand out. No, I think oh. you've had it. You had so copies. I, I did hand some copies. Yep. I so, but I mean, Chad got one and I think yep. Calvin was here. Mo a lot of the officers were here that night and you were already given copies. Yep. Yeah, and they read them. Mm -hmm. And you, had, you didn't get any feedback from any of them. So... I no, other than the question that Chad asked that night. Yep. So let's just let's just go over it one more time and make sure we're good. Let's yep. and submit it. Yep. So if we didn't make any final decisions about, you know, Secretary Treasurer or what what we need just to talk that you know I was willing to talk to his wife, his wife, entertain the and entertain the idea, see what um, heck I may hire her for the office here to set up a few things and streamline a few things but we'll see yeah it sounded like she had a skill set on you know spreadsheets and yeah. that sort of thing so that might be That's really it. helpful yeah. yeah it might be better to do that than worry about that because i think i don't i think he's thinking more more into what's over there than what it really is yeah i think what he wants <clears> is on, he wants the sogs online and he wants all of their paperwork stored um in a computer prized file um, those kind of things um, whether that, but I think and it's seems just, less time. Yeah, you know, whether that's easier or not, I don't know yet. A lot of his stuff, though, I would think is going to be personnel issues, which is going to be stored over here mm -hmm. with you. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then a lot of his other stuff, really, shouldn't it just go up on the website anyway? Make it even easier. We could. And then that way, there you don't have to have all kinds of things going. On. Everybody would know where it was. Yep. I mean, they could have their own section in there on our website and they could whatever they want to put they could put pictures on there on that they could the roster people want to join mm -hmm. put their SOGs or anything right there nope we can do that okay and then how they maintain their files over there is up to them as long as I know <laughs> yeah you know, as long as the next time person says I need access to this then I can get them access and the, the one thing that I did like though and it, when we was talking with Chad as far as making that change so that as far as on the financial end of that yeah I mean not trying to restrain them or restrict them or anything but have it so you know they do what they want you're the gatekeeper mm -hmm. you know I think that's a something that and Chad is fine with that and yeah. I'm sending, yeah, he and I'm sending him you know their, what they've expended Tomorrow I'm going to send, the, send that out to them, and he's going to work up a, a more accurate budget. Um, we talked about the building and things that need to be addressed, and things that we thought we might get done this year and never got to. And you know, we have. So one thing about the building you might want to throw out there: mm -hmm. we do have an empty town garage. <clears throat> well, I heard that yesterday, but not from Jed. <laughs> But I mean, yeah. I heard it from a, a different firefighter. Yeah. You know, he actually brought it up. And when he first said it, it was, 
like, I don't know, it might be kind of clunky because, you know, you can't go too in deep, but you might be able to go, I don't know how it would lay out. Yeah. And honestly, unless you emptied the building and started back and trucks in there, nobody would know. Mm, yeah. That's the only way you're going to see it and you'd really know how it would work. But I do think it's, it's worth footprint. sending, you know, <clears throat> talking to Chad about it, asking him to go up there and really look. They may look at it and come away with, boy, this would be great. Mm -hmm. And if, if that's the case, that's a conversation we should start having. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there's an asset that's just sitting there. Well, and the other side of it is, is we have a lot of things in that building. You know, I was up, I drove around the building the other day. For instance, that trailer on back. That really ought to disappear. It's, it's a factory trailer that's been welded and re-welded. There's no tags left on it anymore. We are not going to have anybody employed through the town that can haul it. Mm. So oh. why is it sitting there? Right. You know, that's something that really it ought to get advertised and get rid of it. And there's a lot of stuff in the building that's the similar type things. You know, some of it has a little bit of value today, but we wait much longer, and then yeah. it's all going to go for scrap. Yeah. You have a um, attachment for uh, removing gravel and, and oh, the sweeper. The sweeper, and my son's like, when are you going to sell it? Can I go look at that? Can we <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> honestly, that's a very good thing, because I think there's two or three of those up there that they bought over the years. This one may not run, this one did run. Yeah. And there's varying attachments. Well, I don't think most of them started now for what, two years? Yeah, oh, yeah. And letting the you know what I mean? Just, it's yeah. just crippling them. Yeah. So. Well, I was going to tell you in the uh, Road Commissioner's report, but we can address it now. Um, the start of our day yesterday was not very good um, because Warren and Chris went to load their trucks with sand to get sand out, and the loader wouldn't start. And then the voting machine wouldn't start. <laughs> wouldn't accept ballots. So while I'm dealing with one, everybody in here is having a now, but um, I've hired Herrick Excavation to come look at the loader. Yep, he's got every equipment mechanic ready. Right he's got a couple, yep. he said. Um, I call a couple other places just to uh, see A, he's cheaper than both of them, and B, they both have to travel and you pay mega bucks mm -hmm. for travel time. Mm -hmm. Plus a percentage, of, one was $3 a mile plus um, 105 an hour for travel, which is more than, and then 130 while they were here. The other one was 90 all the way around, but another extra dollar per mile. What about Haley? Would they work on it for you? I don't know. Do they? Mm, it's that sold. So yeah, that's right. Oh, is that sold? Yeah, it's Redmond, right? Yeah. Is it, what was that now? No, Ray, Johnny Ray, 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 Yes, Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray. Sorry, Ray. Was, uh, close. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't know if he has his own I don't mechanics know. or I don't know. And what does, you know Amanda Thomas in Guilford, her husband, Richard Thomas? Eh, not Rich, is not, I don't know. His name's not Richard. I, I Thomas Douglas? No. no. No, but he's a mechanic. He works. He yeah. uh, anyway. Anyway, he's got a beautiful rig, and he does. But I'm not exactly sure what he does. He might rebuild. I'm well, not, our loader is the battery. It's draining the battery, and every time we go to turn it on, but that might be three months down the road when we. Well, that's it. kind of another thing. I mean, I know. When I was up at the garage and Warren was up there, he was telling me the story that last year, and I, I don't know who would, who would use the, the dozer last, but the dozer ended up coming back and getting dumped in the middle of the garage, out in the front, yeah. and it was getting ready to snow, so Warren, they got the dozer running to get it in the building, and it's still sitting there the way it was a year ago, and it was Jeez. over a year the way it was left, and it's still, nobody hosed it out. Nobody Did that? Get used at the stump dump last year. Yes, that's what I thought. I remembered. So I work. To me, it's kind of we think we're saving money because we have this equipment, but at the end of the day, yeah, nobody nobody owns it. So there's not a lot of give a shit factor here when anybody's using it, <laughs> and nobody's taking care of it. Yeah. I mean, they're bringing yeah. it back. It's yep, yeah, I did my job, and I can also get them to perhaps. Do annual maintenance on that if you want me to. I just, to me, it's, it's no different than the loader. We got a $50,000 piece of equipment 
that all we're using it for now is to load a sand truck that is just turning into a giant expense for the town because it's not running because the battery's dead. And at the end of the day, if the loader disappeared tomorrow, we could have added a loader to the contract, and I'm sure Newt's would have provided a loader to load the sand. That's the only thing and to find out. we wouldn't out. be talking about this. Because if, if they would, that's definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. There's no so, doubt about it. Maybe Same thing with the bulldozer. Like to buy a load. I mean, no, but I'm just saying, you know, I mean, the thought of having town equipment and saving us money is... Mm -mm. Well, it's the same thing with the bulldozer. If you occasionally have to go up to the stump <coughs> dump, you just hire somebody with the equipment to do that. That's right. And your dozer doesn't sit out there just rotting. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, because, I mean, over the last three or four years that I can think of, we've had, I think we've had Williams Weldon come down a couple different times mm -hmm. because we don't use it enough. And mm -hmm. it's just sitting there and the pins freeze up in it. Oh. So. We had this, the, the trucks, when we sold the trucks, you got into those trucks and there was filth three, four inches deep that people just, nobody, like right. you said, no one, nobody who owns cares? it. And there was no, you know, we don't have, you know, a manager level, you know, nobody's checking this stuff. Right. right. It's not like checking it in and out and taking Lawson's it construction yeah. over there. Right. Everything's spotless. Right. So, well, um, I mean, that's like with Herrick's. I mean, Herrick has a truck bay, he right. has his own mechanic, works on all his own equipment. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm sure. That's what they're going to have down there. They are going to have their own equipment to maintain their own. Yep. But it's not what we have. So should we sell the loader and the bulldozer? Uh, well, we need to find out from Chris and Warren if they would provide one. If I mean, I don't know that they have one that they would write into a contract. But if they do, we should find out what that would be. And mm -hmm. then we could mm -hmm. make, make a decision. decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what it's going to cost you to have it and what it costs you to not to have it. Right. Yep. Well, I'll get to send out um, packages because they're done as of April thirtieth. So right. get to yep. read. Oh, Good time to go. get fresh get numbers. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Do Just all Just one this. more piece to throw in. Yep. As a variable, with or without providing a loader. Yep. So we'll probably find out the value of that loader would take a pretty good chunk out of one year's contract. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. <laughs> so. Now I mean, the other way, the other strategy is you don't you don't mess around. You 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 pay someone for annual maintenance on that loader. If yep. you if that's what you, if we want one, yep, that's we, what we need to do. We just need to do that. And yep. Same thing with the bulldozer. If we decide that it shouldn't be sitting out there with mud on it for a year, we should pay yep. someone to take care of our equipment. Yep. Um, so we definitely need to do one that. way or the other. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I think, but I think that's the back with all the other whether it's the weed whacker or a chainsaw yeah. or whatever. If we're going to have it, it needs to go somewhere and you right. maintain and it, or some it needs sort of to go service away. contract with it. Yep. 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 But if the we have a tool we haven't used in three or four years, we probably don't need it. No. The smaller stuff you could take to like true value, some of it. Um, Myself, I would get a bunch of tables together right up through there and have a town yard sale well, right in front. <laughs> Any big items, you, you'll sell them in a few minutes on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah trust me. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, well, that'd be why my kid was like, <laughs> when are you going to sell that? When are you going to sell that? We were cleaning my garage last weekend, and every time I touch something, I'm like, I don't want that. Put it on Facebook. Put it on Facebook. Put it on Facebook. So. That's great. That's just great. Uh, what's the limit that we can sell? $5,000, up to $5,000. Any single item, $5,000 in value. That's the way to approach it. Is, is you hit you want you know if you got an item we we are convinced that we don't want it sell that one item. If you have a day of activity and you start to approach five thousand dollars, then you could get some people saying you should have gotten the approval for liquidating all that equipment. But the first thing is the inventory and knowing what you right, want right, to sell. Right. Yeah. I don't, we've had two or three people wanted to buy that, although I think we worked on something with the water district on that, didn't we? we sold yeah, that yeah, that, we sewer. sold that. We sold that yeah. to the water and sewer district and with the caveat that if we need it. Yeah, that was a, that's, that's a great a, deal. That it works for everybody. Yep. Broke that into the bill of sale and then I wrote, written it down a couple of places in case sometime in the future. You, <laughs> you but the other side of it is, I mean, good. the fire department was saying they don't have enough signs. They don't have enough. I There's tons of that stuff out there. To chat up. See what yeah. those guys think of that whole footprint. Yeah. That might be. I, to me, 
it's the, a better spot. Mm-hmm. But I don't know anything about what would fit in there or not fit in there. But just in terms but of already got that being a fire mm-hmm. department would be pretty cool. But wouldn't it have to be heated? I mean, I, I mean, I know there'd have to be renovation. Oh, yeah, you'd, you'd all, yeah there'd yeah, be yeah, quite yeah. a bit of renovation. Yeah, okay. Well, yes and no. I no? Mean, there has to stay above freezing, yes, but it doesn't need to be 80 degrees for most of it. All right, okay. I mean, yeah. you'd have to have an area for there to have their meetings and... Right, right. You know what I mean? Which, yes, but... Okay. I, you don't have to have all of it. Okay. Do you is I have I've only been in that building in the dark. Is is it all insulated? Is it finished off inside or is it no. kinda? <laughs> so I, heard, I mean yeah, it's a garage. It's a garage. Yeah. yeah. I mean it was never really done and I yeah. don't know, it almost looks like they were trying to do something to keep some of the heat in, but yeah. I mean they really focused into that one main front bay for right. to be the one bay. bay. Yeah. No, and I, I I mean I I wouldn't present it to them with the idea that, you know, this is all you get. If if they like the idea, then we could explore what sort of renovation it would take to make it nice. Uh, but if oh, they don't yeah. like the idea, then I mean, every bay's got nice, heavy, insulated doors. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's mm-hmm. got some. It's got bones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. Like it's, it doesn't. All right. Well, yeah. it'd just be interesting to see well, what their reaction. Then you got this one, and and Ted and I were talking about what needed to be done to. You know, especially that other side that keeps getting bashed in, and those. And that's not going to stop. Right. Yeah. Back well, this here over, and this here over out. here with the metal roof, it's it's just bad and bad. There's, you're never going to fix it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, there's they're trying to keep that building that warm all the time, and it's just right. That's what's going to happen. And we don't own enough land around it, so you can't keep it cleaned up. And when that comes off, there's just no place for it to go. It's going to keep caving that wall in. Yep. So. And if you can't keep it cleaned up, it hits, hits the pile and goes ping and the yep, yep. your building again. And Every year that happens. But even the way the, the parking area out front and that high retaining wall, I mean, that setup on Pleasant Street would be a much better setup. Well, we've actually, I mean, we've had an issue with no fault of anybody, but there was a truck and they lost the brakes on it and they went over the edge of that one. So, I mean, this it's not good. Yeah. No, it's a tight little yeah, air tight. part of the neighborhood. It, it really is. Yep. I mean, you're trying to get out of there in a hurry. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Well, anyway, it's worth a look. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else on the fire department? Uh, I don't know. Uh, cemetery policy and potential warrant articles. All right, I was just playing with them. Um, I thought I'd read them to you, see if you like one versus the other if you think I should be going in a totally different direction um, because I'm going to be needing to turn this into MMA and say can we um, and this is so we don't have to have an ordinance so that we can have a policy and the town can give permission to um, mostly it's the financial stuff so the first one is what was last in a town warrant in 2013, and it says to see if the town will authorize the selectmen on behalf of the town to sell cemetery lots, those revenues shall be put into the Perpetual Care Trust Fund account. That is the last, I don't know, I don't know I've seen it in recent years. We might want to think about that. Um, I don't uh, think we need it, do we? we, Don't we already have permission to sell anything of the town under $5,000 a day? You do. So do we need a, do we need this? This one followed because they reset the value of each lot from 100 to 150. Yeah. That followed. I only thought of that because we were well, just talking about well, that's that. That's true. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If our policy is we have permission to sell anything under five thousand dollars, under five thousand dollars, one item, yeah. does that cover us for this conversation? Well, the other piece is the perpetual care trust fund account. Um, and as I've discovered, you only have to put 30% of um, those funds into the Perpetual Trust Fund account, but all of those funds have to be spent on your cemeteries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that gives you access to a bigger chunk instead of right. the mean. Right. And only the gain on the trust fund can be spent, Correct. which mm-hmm. until interest rates change, there will never be any. Right. We'll never right. So, so we put as put little as we can in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why, and we don't need to ask that because we have to do that. That's the rule. 
30%. Yeah. 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 We're not with 30% because we want to. No. 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 We would do less if we could. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So we would just do what we're required by law. Well, so, and then... Yeah. Cause so the second one I said, you know, the same setup, see if the town will authorize you, you to sell lots. At least 30% of those revenues shall be put into the perpetual care. Trust my account. That's law. You have to do it. I don't know why you have to vote on it. I don't. Um, I don't think we need it. No. Either one. Well, so then I was thinking to see if the town will authorize like on behalf of the town to set the cost for a cemetery lot on an annual basis. But I think we already can do that because we can sell things. Correct. Well, MMA told me that you couldn't set the cost. Cost that that had to go for the legislative body. So I thought I thought if we put just That's a simple. Yeah, it's not it's not a hard thing. I mean, if you want to every year, it's kind of like the interest rate on right. overdue yeah, yeah, yeah. taxes. Those, yeah. Uh, things, you know, so just say give them permission. Every year that'll be on there. to set the cost. Yeah. Yeah. That, or we could put the cost. Oh, sure. you, know, you know, in yeah, our budgetary process, we could have a warrant article that says it's gonna cemetery be lots will be year. this. They can lower it, but they can't raise it. Oh, yeah, well, that might not be good. Uh, what can we do about it? Either way. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I mean, I, but I'm... Well, you could just, either way, you could either, if you're worried about that, you could have it just be this worded is the, the other cost. way. Yeah. You yeah. Can just, well, just have it worded that... That we can, can set the cost. cost. Or, any, right. or any year you're not going to mess with it, you, you put it... You put, Set the price, and then if you're gonna mess with it, you put the new price in. I just leave it same verbiage all the time. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you want to avoid no, no, any no, conflicts, no. they well, set the cost. We're not trying no, to make money. I'm trying either. to trying to set this out as clearly as possible. I'm not yep. trying to hide, right. hide right. any of it. And then I think that's let's good. see. I, I just can I can just see where if you put too much into this, like the thirty percent, we don't have to put that in there because it's already made to it anyway. So right. I would leave that out because it's just going to get into... And it's very why? hard to explain right. why it is you don't want... But I mean, but true care is important. Yeah, it is. But guess what? It's actually it. harder to take care of the cemetery the more we put in. Right. It, it is counterintuitive. If we keep putting it all in there, and if the town had no money but only that account, we would never be able to mow the lawn. That's right. That's crazy. And frankly, mm -hmm. perpetual care only covers what you guys are doing on now. an annual basis now. I know. But I'm just saying that if, if we continue to keep putting all the money in there... Right. And we didn't use any other town funds, we would never be able to mow the lawn. Right. No, we would not. So. I should have a handy dandy volunteer. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you could afford to buy the gas. The, the well, I know. If somebody <laughs> volunteered to mow. I know. I know. The, uh, the, the requirement that you're only able to spend earnings, mm -hmm. is, is that state statute? Mm -hmm. Interesting. They need to revisit that. I mean, it's foolish because there are no. Because there is no earnings now. And, and there no won't be now. until things right. change. So, and obviously, I would know. Yeah, but like a Bangor or a Portland, or do they charge? If they're required I mean, to our, put thirty percent in, that's a lot of money. I mean, our, our lots are pretty affordable, as right. far as I'm concerned. Right. You know, yeah. if you go to a Bangor or some of these I bigger, they're probably more expensive. That's what I'm wondering. Some of them are more expensive. Some of them have an actual. Do you want to purchase perpetual care? And sell. So that's how they're and getting. And sell for perpetual care, but I don't think it. Here, this, but you don't. I, don't it's gonna work. I think they're that's doing. I mean, if you look at you go to one of those huge cemeteries in Augusta or Bangor, there aren't lots that are not receiving care. That's right. Well, no, they can't because I mean, they're all, it's all going to be. They're all receiving the same care. Now I remember, and you'll see stones that have PC on them. So that was because you and paid I for see, that. And I see old records. But it's not done that way anymore. Yeah. Uh, at least not, it doesn't look gave, that way. Right. So and so, you know, back in the 1930s, gave $200 for perpetual care, and I imagine that was a huge chunk of yeah. money. And Yes, it was. Okay. Interesting. And then, is um, let's see, okay. Next one. It sees the town will authorize the selectmen on behalf of the town to require every cemetery lot deed to be registered at the Piscataquis Registry of Deeds and to allow the selectmen to set the fee for registering each deed. Now the auditor told me I had to put the fee in front of the town. I don't know why. Why? I wouldn't ask them about doing that either. All right. The C makes the MMA is getting shorter all the time. No, because honestly, that's something that to keep this clunky, less clunky. Less clunky. This is how we want to move our cemeteries forward and have them registered. So, 
I guess the question is, are we allowed That's to require registration? And, and in that sense, we can just build it into the fee. Right. Yes. Right, which is what I was planning. So if, yeah. if the selectmen, now the, your, I guess your problem is, and this is where this comes into the policy, is the four of us may be all on the same page and mm -hmm. that makes total sense, mm -hmm. but it needs to be written down mm -hmm. somewhere that this is the policy, right. that the it's annual the fee or the registration, the, 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 yeah, the registration fee is included in the purchase, whatever it is that the select board ends up arriving at, because it's important for the organization of the cemetery that they yeah. be properly recorded. It is, and, and how you figure it is important to what 30% of your perpetual care is. Yep. Right, but I think what you got to do is you got to have the fee, you got to have the money that you're getting from the, the lot, and then you have to have the administration costs kind of separate. Well, because one of them is going into your general fund and the other one is correct. going into as an expenditure. So and your language... Like that is you don't want... Uh, you don't want the monies that you're taking in to register for, the, for the thirty percent. Right. That's what yeah. I was trying to right. say. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, because some of you are saying, "Well, you can't give all of that town money or any of that town money to the county without." So we need to identify. Right. Right. The the registration fee is a portion of the fee that they, we set, right. and that gets sent to the county. And not only know that you have to identify the amount; it's just that whatever it costs to register. Is going to be included. That, cause does the county ever change it, or has it been that way forever? It goes up it a little bit, but you know. that's why I would think this is what I'm selling my lot for. This is our where how you want administration fees, or like when you buy a vehicle tax title. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. County not, registration right? fee is yeah, 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 that's yeah, right. But that's right. County actually fee. a separate line, yeah, right? But it's mandatory. You're going to do it because it's you're buying it. This is what you're going to do. Right. So. Yep. Well, it needs to be mandatory. Huh? Uh, that's why. We, <laughs> right. That's what we're just. Yeah. Yeah. We're we totally agree with you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> for instance, I had somebody come in and they want a lot near their grandfather's and mother's lot, and I've got one sitting in front of them that appears to have three vacant spaces. Nobody's used them for fifty, sixty years. Lots of people, lots of members of the family in town have bought their own lots down there instead of using them. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and so, and I have no deed that says that this person who supposedly owns the lot owns it. Huh. So do I sell? Or, or do I say to the family, hey, guys, you have... This is yours. You have two lots here, these are yours. Um, yeah, yeah. And I can't, uh, all I have is one piece of paper that says, Wow. So I really want deeds to be. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh definitely. We're oh, with yeah. you. So that's why I would keep it less clunky as possible, yeah. and just throw it out there. Ask the question. You know, you can just word the question. Do you approve the selectmen to sell lots at the fee that they set, or however you want to? But yeah. I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't make it any more than it needs to be. I think you just have to reference that included in the fee that we set is the, the fee to the county for the deed. But I don't think it has to be part of the article. I think, well, this is what you were saying. If, if the town's bringing in money, the town's people need to vote or understand that not all that money is town money. Yeah, it's, right, it's going on. The fee so that the select be, board sets includes a portion that, of money that's going to the county. Right, right. Because the last time, the last thing I did, I got really simple. To see if the town will authorize the selectmen on behalf of the town to set all cemetery fees for the town cemeteries. That's, that's <laughs> good. Which, that's all fine, but yeah. let's let's say we, we say it's $200 a lot. Yeah. And someone says, well, hold it. You, you said it's $200 a lot, but only one seventy five is coming to the town. Where's the 200 going? Well, there's also a county fee. Well, you didn't say that in your ordinance. Well, well it comes in to the town. Right. Yeah, but we, we're going to set that. We just pay, Right, well, then we you need that. Out. I think you need to articulate it. Yeah, we do. We're right here. But as far as permission to set it is what we're going to... But I think it needs to be in the warrant that a portion of that is a... Even if it's italicized in front to... to, to well, I, yeah, I including notify. something in, in, right. inclusive of this fee is the county registration. In italics. For example, $25. Right. Uh, whatever. 
only matters with him. Either way. It won't matter until someone says, hold it. Hey, wait you, a minute. You sent a portion of that money you've away. That's why we're going to have a policy. Well, that's funny. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. No, that's, How that's the policy what I'm be. No, we're not. We're talking about the article for the warrant. Not the policy. We're gonna have a policy that's gonna say that we want it to be mandatory and we're gonna pay the fees and Well I don't have to have a, a warrant article for you guys to set policy because that is your job. No, no, I understand so, that, but I'm just saying yeah, you have to have an article to say that we can sell it yeah. and that we're gonna set the fees per the, our policies. Okay. And then in your policy, that's where because you never know, five years from now somebody this could all change and the next people come in so oh, this is stupid. Why are we doing that? And they may not want us to do that anymore. I hope not, because it's definitely going to make it better. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I'll send a couple versions of this. I think if you put it on the warrant, you're locked. If, if that language is, I, I, it's like the interest rate, mm. okay? If every year the citizens of Sanctuary will get used to seeing they've approved it again, the select board can. So they can set the price for the lots, and included in that price is a registration with the county. If that's and people vote on that every single year, I mean, just one item they're going to vote for. And if they don't vote, I don't know what happens. If they don't give you the authority, you, you can't sell any lots anymore, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, so it would be up to the town because you can't take that out because there's no removing that off a of warrant because it's, it's, there's no impact yeah. to the town. Right. So you're collecting money, but it's going out. It's coming in, it's going out. There's no, you, it's a zero value. There's no. It's just authority. It's giving authority. Right. And if they don't grant the authority, you won't be selling lots. Okay. Something to that effect. What I would definitely run it by MMA and see if they what they think. But I'm just Maybe concerned about this how thing how losing it. its way yep. after two of us are gone. Right, 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 right. I just I'm more That's worried about administratively and line items in how we do this so that it is kept separately. Yep, yeah, that's, I, yeah. That is the most important piece to, that I'm worried about. Yeah, I think that's why we actually have to have the article is because all other cemetery fees have to go to... Right. Yeah. And you're going to take one check and the authority to pull $20 or $25 out of that check and put right. it somewhere else that's comes from that warrant article. article. That's the, that is the issue. Which it should be clean, and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a big deal. Nope. As long as they vote yes. And, and the great thing about it is, if the county fee goes up midway through the year, instead of you're 25 or 30, you're, you're still covered. Yeah, you're not verbaging no. X. You're no, no, averaging no. plus. Correct. Yep. The fee. Yep. Okay. Fee. And the other thing MMA said you needed an ordinance for was to give you, I guess, the authority to enforce your policy. But we talk about this all the time. Um, anything that's not state law, we we don't have anybody to enforce any. No, right. no, anyway, no, no. So there is no, I'm, there is no I'm enforcement not, of a policy. No, yeah. Policy means pretty please. Yeah. So. But I do like the policies because it keeps, the biggest part about the policy is we continue to still run into things that were done in the past that are never, I see a policy as a documentation tool for the next mm -hmm. years to mm -hmm. come for people to look at and see what well, we're trying to do. Yeah, at least it's a starting point. Yeah. At least it's referenced. Right. Anyway. Yeah, and with the deeds you have, like I, will have, I have a card that says, um, Delbert Marcus Rollins, Paid a hundred bucks and it's lot two two fifteen. Now I don't know if the, in 1950 that could have been the entire lot. It could have been anything. It, 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 the entire plot. It could have been. You know, it, it doesn't give me a date as to when he bought it. It doesn't give me a number of spots that he bought. It doesn't yes. tell me who his wife was and who his heirs are and you know, who he. And Can you then, imagine doing and then, like Boston? And then, and then John Smith is buried in that lot, and I don't know why. That's how you end up in the situation in Guilford when they were digging the power line for cars. Oh. Well, I, and I, they I, ran into bodies. Yeah. In, in, trying to figure, in trying to figure this one out, I found this Boyd Retzel, Retzel, Retzel has three lots. I'm like, who is he? So I look him up. He was married to. 
Ellis Day door. She's buried somewhere else in the cemetery. And she bought him, he died like four months before her, and she bought him three lots knowing that he has no, no kids. He was her second husband. And, it, and she had extra lots where she was buried and didn't want him there with her first <laughs> Wow. Husband Maybe husband. she just wanted that It's space. fascinating. I guess it really so. Is. Or I just, oh, yeah, you know what I'm like. Feel proud. So I'm scratching my head going, who does this kind of thing? And it, it's really, it's just, it's Are the records wrong or did the people actually do this in this scenario that's playing on my head? Is this real, you know? It's so the current day deeds, for example, the ones that we're going to be registering at the Registry of Deeds, does an attorney write that deed up, or do you have, is it GPS coordinates? How does that work? Just well, briefly. you just, you, we have maps. Okay. And so it, the map says that this it, lot is um, part But one, it's not very... Part two of the village cemetery, and it's lot such and such. Okay. So it's still pretty, pretty loosey. It, it could still be. Okay. Because, because like, and some of these people, they bought a whole plot, and when they bought them, that was six burial yeah. spaces. But now it's by not. The time, by the time they need to be buried, the coffins are and vaults are bigger, and so it's four. Unreal. Spaces. Right, but when we sold those, didn't we say they were X by X feet wise? Not some of them do. Some, not all of them. Not all of them. Oh. Policy doesn't necessarily. Village has a set Sounds space, cheap. but um, some of the others don't. You know that's why we. That's why we all need to think of all of these. Yeah. Different things and. Mm -hmm. And try to cover them, and so, you know, I, ideally, I'd like one form so that when the sexton fills it out. Right. Right. All of the it's information standardized. It's standardized. standardized. It's all there. Yeah. He doesn't have to come in and tell the ladies in the office, "Well, I did this, 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 and this." And he he updates the maps. Well, if he updates the maps, he's got to have all that information to go to them. Wow. I, mean, I saw things last year written on scraps of paper this way and this way and <laughs> here. <laughs> wow. You know. So yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It needs to be cleaned up. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank so there's right. my rant. Good. Okay. Uh, we're done with cemetery. We're done. With cemetery. Uh, new business uh, release deed. Okay. I got a call from a realtor saying that she was selling a piece of property for somebody and it had a lien that had not been please. released. And could I please fix that? And so I went back and looked and. This piece of property was leaned every year from like 62 to 73, and all the other liens were released. And so I'm thinking, well, you know, back when they were doing it, it was just a stamp in the margin that, that released the deed with a written in date. I'm like, well, they probably forgot. So I said, all right, I don't know how to release this. This is 50 years ago. So I call, I called MMA, and I called David Peaks, who was the lawyer for the other party, to see what he recommended. He sent me a release deed. MMA called me back and said, you can't release that. Mm -hmm. They might actually owe that money. Mm -hmm. sure. And mm -hmm. that money um, would have accrued mm -hmm. a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. heck of a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. And so you need records saying that... They're going to show they paid it it had been paid. Mm -hmm. And that would be why I was looking at all the old town reports because that's the only proof I have from 50 oh. years ago that this person paid it. Or didn't. Or didn't. Or even the amount. Do you know what the amount was? Yeah, we're talking 20 bucks. Oh. No kidding. Oh. Yeah. So you've already spent more time and effort than yeah. this. Well, well, plus interest. Well, except 20, 20 bucks. You could be talking a couple hundred dollars. Well, I don't know. Interest I mean, rates are pretty high in the 70s. Yeah, <laughs> 15%. Doubles, doubles, doubles. I mean, yeah. 40, 80, ones, maybe 300 yeah. bucks. Not enough to spend a whole lot of time in. I'm going to say, you're not, Dale's right. What's going to happen is you're, I mean, yeah, same probably. is true for them, though. You might say to him, listen, I've estimated it's probably 300 bucks. And he, and he might say, fine. Because the lawyers, that's, that's 30 minutes. Yep. So you can't find proof is paid? The proof that is paid is that it's not in the town reports. Oh. 
And then, and then we have another lien the next year where they actually went to writing out the lien and everything was released the, the year after, that next year. So it looks to me like they paid it and somebody didn't stamp the margin and I'm recommending that you sign the release deed, but if you feel that something else needs to be... I don't think it's... It <laughs> Sounds like you've researched it. Yes, as, yes. As, as Best well as you yeah, reasonably yeah. could. Yeah. Right. Those are the only records I have. And right. when Dale said we already spent twenty dollars just on you doing this. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I've got right. stuff about libraries, and you know, when I'm reading through all this stuff, I'm like, oh, and this. <laughs> so so um, here, this is for you guys to sign, and you can read the letter for David if you'd like to. It doesn't take long. Then I'm like, it just oh. doesn't take long to put a lot of effort into something you fire up, see, done the value. So, yeah. And if it had been, I, it, I mean, the town could have foreclosed on the property. Right. So, we the fact that we didn't is kind of evidence that it was paid. Well, that's what I thought. I mean, well, in the year after that, they're all gone. So, yeah. you would have thought they would have. Uh, like, okay, it's kind of it. interesting, though, that it's 50 years and it's now coming to life. Yeah. That's kind of. I mean, but he is selling it. We are going to be collecting tax money on it. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 1962, yeah. 20 bucks was a week's pay. Wow. And uh, his parents sold it. Not amazing. <laughs> Scary uh, thing about it that way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A week's so, pay, a couple hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Appointments, B. Okay, we haven't looked at the budget committee or the road committee. Um, so I've started reaching out to budget committee members whose term was not up. Um, Terry Wark told me that she is done, so there's another member of the budget committee I need to be looking for. Um, I've called Cynthia Hall, Patty Davis, and Diane McCarthy, all who have time left on theirs, but they haven't returned my calls yet. And Lance Burgess was on last year, and his um, appointment is up. So I had hoped to have some names to put in front of you and to do appointments tonight, but um, the only person who <coughs> I know would like to be on the budget committee is Rick Pellerin. I don't have any other ideas of where to go. I asked Tom Caron, he, he gave me a maybe. But anybody have any good good ideas for people that I can reach out to. And Has Lance said he would do it again? I haven't called Lance yet. Because I have another issue with Lance and we get to discuss that <laughs> before I call him. And neither of the three women that you mentioned did, have not responded. We haven't Cynthia responded all, yet. Diane. Um, Cynthia and Patty. Patty have been on it forever. Mm -hmm. I don't imagine they're going to say no, but I haven't heard back from them. The only thing is that I think is, and it was definitely more relevant last year. The year before was a little bit, but as long as us, when we was originally started there, that process has changed so oh, much. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. You're almost it's it's damn near to the point of getting Just, through it tonight. Right. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. close. Yeah. So it is. I think the only reason it it would take longer is if the members of the committee didn't have that understanding uh, as to how much things have changed. Mm -hmm. If your last mm -hmm. involvement was five years ago, mm -hmm. you're yeah, not going to even recognize no. what we're doing now. It's just so clean. Yeah. No, but I mean, that's the other side of it, though, is the, like these ladies, they've kind of been involved through this yep. process as well. So there's not 5,000 questions anymore. There's not everybody's looking and oh. digging and trying to find. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's this? Where's this? I mean, when they Sorry, show up, I'm you don't need more than three. 
Is that right? I three mean, committee members? They're, they're advisory, and if you've got three experienced people that want to put the time in and do it, that's fine with me, but maybe four or five, whatever. But right. uh, Matt might do it. Did he do it last year for a while? He, he did, did it. So last year I was on the budget committee. Mm-hmm. Matt Bell? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but then I didn't see, we didn't see him again, and I didn't know if that was because it, the experience was. Well, <laughs> it, it was rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no, it was, that was. It was, it was really bad for a while. I mean, you were there. Yeah. yeah it was well, adversarial was, is what it was. That was a bad year. Yeah, it was a very bad year. Yeah. 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 So I can see where anybody that was on back then, if you if that's your your last remembrance of being a part of it. Yeah. You don't want to be yeah. on Yeah, it's like, I'm not dealing with that again. So if Cynthia Patty and Diane. Diane. Cynthia and Patty have experience. Rick has a lot of experience. He just wasn't on last year due to health reasons. Yep, that's right. Mm-hmm. I remember that. No, and I'm fine with Rick because he's definitely very knowledgeable. But and yeah, he's so seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. I think he knows. The same deal. I hope he, you know, he understands that, that this is pretty refined. It's it's not the five weeks or five five or six different meetings. This is yeah. pretty straight. Well, he asked me. And yeah, I said I thought you said you wanted to do this. You told me. Ask you, he said, Yeah, well, I didn't want it to be a long, drawn out process. No, it was like one to two meetings. He's like, Okay, yeah, it was good with that. No, it reminded me of uh, you know, the the Senate versus the House, where the House comes in and they want five trillion, and everybody's arguing, trying to get out of two. That's the way it was. We're just not doing anything like that. It's nobody's aiming high to hope you get here, and yeah, so anyway, yeah, it's totally transparent now. Well, that was just it. The information was provided before was all fluffed up so that you had had to do you could already cut it because it was already fluffed enough, they were covered. (laughs) (laughs) There was chuckling about that, so there was some chuckling. Growth committee, I didn't get to talk to anybody yet, but um. I can tell you that uh, Toby Warren, Josh, no, Josh and Toby Warren and Diane Burritos is, are all up. Josh never returns my phone calls, so I'm probably not going to reach out to him. You're on the road committee now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm so close to the same thought process. Do I say you're the road commissioner? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, if you have a selection of people that you would like to work with, uh, that's Just probably a very, but yeah. I would keep it smaller than that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. And I just, you know, like I like to deal with Warren because he plows the roads all the Right. Makes right. total so, sense. So Nobody yeah. knows him better. So, yeah. where, where, where are my worst spots? Where, where do yep. I need to be focusing yep. next? Yep. Those kind of but I, and I like the idea that Toby's on there because um, Silver's Mills, I had a totally different story, but I had to borrow a Warren skid steer one. And I rode from, I were not going to take the trailer and chain it. And I, I just went down and got it, drove it to my house. Well, and this is why I want Toby the same way. Toby's on our roads all the time on equipment. Mm-hmm. And what you see on a road driving down at 45 miles an hour, ride on it on a piece of equipment. Yeah, and then yeah. give you, You'll have a different view. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same. Well, it's like the, the tree that you drive by and think is not a problem. And yeah. it smacks Warren in the cab every time he drives by. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. sees it a totally different perspective. Right. right. So I would, I would really like to see, you know, you kind of those kind of thought processes to who you use. Yeah. You know, the people that really are on the ground and really know the roads better than any of us. Yep. When it so comes to that. I'm looking for a list. <laughs> yep. You get two, you get three. Handpick, so handpick who you want to work. Yeah, with. Yeah, who you want to work yeah. with. Yeah. So. So you don't keep you. Don't, been, as long as I have three, you're not. You don't care if I have five. No. 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 no that's no. But that's up two, to you. you. If you're the, you're three on it too, so yeah, that puts you to three. Okay. And if you there's nothing wrong, I don't see a problem with you could reach out to. Uh, I don't know if we can officially have them on our committee, but you know you could have Herrick on it, or you could have Seth, or you know what I mean. You could get other people that help do things mm. because it'd be way easier for bouncing off ideas on how you're going to fix it or different thought processes if it was all in the same room. Yeah. And I don't see where there's, I mean, it's an advisory committee. It's sure. Not a, okay, so, so that doesn't live here. No. Seth doesn't live here. That's what, that's what Dale's saying. But you've got three already. Right. So if you wanted them to be a part, don't have to come every meeting, but they could yeah. come as advisors yeah. okay. to the committee. 
to help. Yeah, I don't have to give them a seat on the Correct. committee. I just have to. Right, because I'm, you already would have three people. for expertise. Right, right. 100%. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea, Dale. We just seem to spend a lot of time after an idea to try to figure out how we're going to do it. So I think if, yeah, you know what I right. mean, if you had more have your contractors advising you. having, right. have that conversation all together with you at once, then it might make things smoother afterwards. So. Look at that. We're whipping right through there. Mm -hmm. um, town manager report. All right. Election. I think the election went fairly well. We had 759 votes cast, 281 of those were um, not abs just absentee, but um, mail-in voting. Is that a really high number for us, too? That's a really high number. We generally, for presidential, it runs about 100. <laughs> um, we beat the 2016 presidential election by like a dozen votes. 747 that that year. Um, we had people were very. Uh, they were not grumpy. They were not. They were not um, militant. They were not. You know all these things with COVID and um, yeah, every all the processes changing and rank choice voting and everybody was in a really good. I'd be glad to really, get out. Really. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the weather was not great. No, and so that issue was we had snow and we didn't get sand on the uh, uh, parking lot till about 8.30. But we did get sand on the parking lot. And, um, but that was because of the machine down? The machine was down. Okay. But Warren and Chris were out there working on it, but it, it wouldn't go. Um, then the ballot machine decided not to accept the first ballot. We have to set these machines up two weeks in advance, um, run a test, everything has to run properly, and then we keep everybody away from them. I don't know if because of the wind we might have had a power flicker, maybe oh, a power surge or something oh. might have done it, but we had a gentleman who waited outside for half an hour to 45 minutes for the polls to open <laughs> and, and then he voted and then yes. we had a panic because the uh, machine wouldn't start so Sarah was on the phone while uh, Lorna was trying to look up through all of her directions if there was oh my gosh. any proper procedure finally she called as well and said my machine is down you have to answer this immediately and she got through before Sarah did. <laughs> Sarah's still on the line waiting, and they had her do a hard reset. Um, there were lots of questions about ranked choice voting. I think there were there were more spoiled ballots because of <coughs> ranked ranked choice, and um, S spoiled meaning you you they had to come up and ask for a new one. one. Uh -huh. um, there were forty six people who registered to vote yesterday on the um, on the day of voting. There was one challenged uh, ballot because the person registered and didn't have any proof of residency. But we, we didn't turn anybody away. Most everybody wore their masks, not everybody. Nobody wore political masks, nobody... <laughs> <laughs> nobody, um, yeah. Or political T-shirts or any of any of those things. We didn't have any. Um, we did have somebody from the state come in and inspect and say your compliance with the COVID. Yeah, that's it. I think just running well general. and it, compliance in general. But I think because of COVID and the um, number of uh, the differences in the process, they were sending them out to all all over the state. I frankly thought nobody would hit here, but. But they didn't, and they said the, they looked good. So, um, anything else about the election? I'm just going to say that I pulled in at 4 o'clock and ended up, didn't even dare to park anywhere in here because it was that full. I stuffed in over next to the steps of the fire department and knew that you guys with social distancing wouldn't have all of these open. Mm -hmm. And there was so, I mean, I'm pulling in, and I don't know, 
I didn't count. Five or six people coming in as I'm. This is, no, this is. I just. This is going to be bad. And uh, so I sat there for a minute, and it's like people are shuttling right out the door, you know. And and I came in, and I don't think I was here ten minutes. I mean, so the volume of people that was here, and I mean, when you figure you're only using half our spots, yeah. and I I was amazed how quickly it was. We opened the library so anybody who like came to register a vehicle or something like that to go up that way and not get tangled up in this, um, you know, and obviously we've always had people exit mm -hmm. that way and it seemed to work. It worked good, I well, thought. We had um, somebody register yesterday, it was his 18th birthday, uh -huh. and we had a 73 year old register and it was his first time ever voting. Wow. That's neat. Wow. So it was neat. We were well, one thing I will say is that um, um, we were checking the results, and Sangerville, of all the towns in Piscataquis County, was the first to officially um, report the results. Well, we so I was really, I mean, that's, that's, that's great. We had two teams. Uh, Cheryl, Kathy, and I had to do all the transferring of the data from the the tapes that you get to all the forms that they want you to fill out and um, Lorna and Rebecca and Sarah have had to organize all, all the ballots because you know they, they're just stuffed in the, in the side yeah. of the machine and yeah um, that's great we were out of here. Uh, Cheryl Rebecca and Kathy left by 9 I left by 9 15 and all they were waiting for at that point was the faxes to go through mm -hmm. it was all done because everybody was faxing yeah. the same number right it's pretty early especially with the record numbers Right. No, it was it was it was great. Had, so I we did have two ballots that had to be hand counted. Somebody turned a ballot in um, by absentee ballot, done in pencil, <laughs> and the machine wouldn't read it. And one of the ballots as they were opening the absentee envelope ripped on the corner where the um, tabs oh, are, and, and it wouldn't take it. Uh, but they were both counted. Mm -hmm. um, so, well. Nice job. Really, really, really well done. So we think, we think it went well. Yeah, good. Yeah. We already talked about cemeteries. We already talked about cemeteries. I think... You're on eight. We're on eight. Okay. Road Commissioner. Okay. Brush cutting. <laughs> Jody comes in in the middle of election and says, I think Rick's out there with his equipment. He was coming next. <laughs> well, I him. followed him all the way from Dover, but and I thought it was him, but it I didn't was know. Him. Yeah, but he never came in. Um, so I called, left a message. His wife called back and said he'll, he'll call you. I've talked to him. I believe he started Silver's Mills today. Did you see any signs? I, I haven't got that, but I talked to him this morning, and he kind of sounded to me like he wasn't starting to. The signs were up this morning when I came through, and then. When I and I didn't see the tractor, so I came in and he was here. I pulled right in and I did get to talk to him for a little bit. Um, he sounded like he was going to start tomorrow, well, but the I, machine I, was running. Something about hauling it up or something. It wasn't um, working. Right I hard. wanted him to wait till he and I could actually go from point A to point B yes. on both roads. Yeah. And um, I have an issue with Flanders Hill that I want to update you all on, and so I was like, please don't go to Flanders Hill. Please start on on. Uh, Silver's Mills, and he, I thought he was going to start on it Silver's was, Mills. It was but signed from 23, well, the, the other sign was down by Jazz's house. Okay. So he had that part signed, and I didn't see him, and then when I got up here, he was in his truck, and I talked with him. Um, but I, it sounded like he was, there was an issue with, maybe with a trailer to get it up or whatever, he wants, so... He wants a place to leave it up on I Silver's Mills. I told him right where I live, and told okay. him he's more than welcome to leave it there, or he can leave his truck there during the day, do whatever he wants to do, and yeah. if he needs something somewhere else, to let one of us know, and we'll find him something. Yeah. And I so. said, well, let me, give me a second to think about it, and, um, yeah. yeah, so, I don't know if he started today or not, but he's coming, I'm, but I'm, he and I are going to get together tomorrow, right. and he is definitely starting tomorrow if he didn't start today. Um, Depending on how far he gets tomorrow, um, and I'm not sure how this is going to work, or how much time it takes, or whatever, but you got Jazz's house on that end, too, so. Okay. I'm sure he can leave it right at the top of her driveway, and there won't be an issue there either. Okay. So, well, I would think you could go further than that. Yeah. But how far are you? You're not that 
I'm down I'm pretty far. Mile and a half, two miles? Right. So it's about half of it. He's about half of it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's doing a lot of big stuff in the grind, and I'm not yeah. sure how quickly this is going to happen. So I'm just throwing yeah, out I, a couple of different options know. for him, how, whatever works for him. I yeah. Mean. And so. if he needs something down further, just we can probably find him something down that way. Yeah. So he doesn't have to keep hauling it, too. So, so Silver Snows is a four broad road that brings us to Landers Hill. Um, Lance Burgess came in last Thursday and stopped to talk to me and wanted me to know that from one end of the Gray Road to the discontinued end of the Gray Road was once a farmer's road. It was never, um, the town took it by uh, prescriptive easement and so it was never a, never by eminent domain, never taking of the land and therefore he felt that we could you know, we could do some brush cutting, but we had to be very careful about what we took and what we didn't take because the prescriptive easement only included the road, just the road space. Because it was by prescriptive easement, it didn't include the ditches. And so I said, okay, that's. Is he talking about Flanders Hill Road? Yes. Yes. The section between the ends of the Great Road. In the original road. Didn't go around, yeah. it went up and over. Right. And we've so, been there. <laughs> yeah. But so I've decided to look it all up. I think he's mistaken. I mean it probably was taken by prescriptive easement, but that does not change the fact that we've maintained that road for mm -hmm. however many years. We've always done the ditches, we've done the culverts, you paved it, you did the roadside mowing, you mm -hmm. do the brush cutting. So we have to maintain the integrity of that road. Exactly. Have it's we a, been doing all that for more than 20 years? Oh, yeah. More than 20 years. Because 20 years is a magic number. Yeah. That's the magic yeah. number. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was turned to dirt up through there. More yeah. Than that. I mean, we've done, we I ditched it about that long. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Oh, and is there some specific, like, does he have a tree that he's concerned about? Or is it well, a, he owns a lot of property on both sides, and he selectively cut it. I guess in years past, back when Michelle Dumoulin was here, they was, there was talk about on the south side or the upper side, cutting some trees to let in sunlight. He maintains that um, in the winter when that would be necessary, the sun doesn't get up high enough to make anything out of like No one's cutting, even suggesting that like, We're not cutting trees, we're doing no. a brush cutting and he, he doesn't want stuff touched on the bottom side because it's holding the road in place, he feels. But we're not going to cut any trees. The, yeah, I don't think any of this is part of the conversation. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> well, I, I got we're just talking about limbs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, but he I should come to a meeting if he wants to. So I just wanted to warn Rick and show him the area before he started there. Everything I have, well I call the state, the whole of Flanders Hill is a townway. We've always maintained the ditches and... So what does they say that is for our width, if it's a townway? They don't, they don't have one. Well I mean we must be able to say it's going too broad. How do we ditch it? You know what I mean? We yeah. have to be able yeah. to... Under that term, we, we have a minimum size. I have something in there that says three rods, but it's nothing I can back up with paperwork. Uh, it, again, it seems like we have been on this before, and if you can't prove otherwise, it's a default. It's like it, if it's if you can't prove a two, it's a three. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think a three is the number. And I'm not. Yeah. yeah, I think it is something like that, but. Uh, but we're not, again, I think he's concerned about something that no one's even proposing. No one's going yeah. to cut any tree, so we're just... Well, he, well, he, he grind received up six, a letter eight eight inches. Inches. Yeah, but we they're in the roadway. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're within that distance, right. and that's all that matters. Right. right. Well, he was, you know, touching anything out. He, he doesn't have that work. option. And then, I mean, so, well, I just wanted to read all of this and, yeah. and, and agree with it. That's what it says. If you've been maintaining it... It's, and you've maintained it like any other town way, and you've been doing all these things. It is things our responsibility to get them trees out of the way. Exactly. To maintain that road mm -hmm. for the and safety I, of everybody. And then I went and looked, and there's only one tree that I, I'm concerned about, and that I'm pretty sure it has to go because it's right up against the pavement, and, but it's a big tree. It's nothing he's going to be able to brush. Yeah, I mean, um, we've kind of had these conversations before. I mean, mm -hmm. 
we've got trees. We had trees in one spot where the plow wing was actually beating them off them when we were plowing, and landowners didn't want them cut. Well, they have to go. I mean, mm -hmm. we have to be able to maintain the roads. So. Well, I just wanted to let you know that that was an issue. Um, and then I want to talk to you about the grading. The grading was supposed to happen while I was on vacation. It did not happen. I'd been talking to the uh, contractor periodically. When's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Until over a week, just over a week ago, he said, yeah, I'm not going to get to it. <laughs> Due to circumstances and the weather, it's not going to happen. So I have Herrick lined up now to do it, but he's got to finish a job up north. I'm hoping sometime this tomorrow or Friday he can start. Weather's great next week. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm really hoping he can't start until Monday or Tuesday. Well, you know, because he 60 will... degrees, right now the road's froze. I know. But, yeah, no, can, but we've got several days of 60 degrees. Yeah, really. and that's what I mean. No, can, we can get first. into next week a little bit. Yeah. I think it's prime, prime so he time. I, yeah, you know, I look at it and he, I know, I'm sure he'll say, you know, I don't want to do, I can't do it while it's frozen, yeah. obviously. And the bog's all froze, froze over last week. Yeah, Is the pond's frozen. Mm -hmm. can't. Now and if you're in your shape like Flanders Hill, oh, that's that's, awesome. that's going to take a couple of days before that's doable. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, Monday might be a. <laughs> I mean, still in, not it, it, but yeah. being up north, he might have not been able and to finish that, that, that job. Bad. Too. Oh, oh, it, so. it needs it bad. So, yeah, he and I are in touch, and we will get. He did a good job on the Anderson. Yep. That's all ditched. You get down through there now, both mm -hmm. sides. Did a really good job shaping that in. He Looks did. like he must have put some gravel in too. A little bit. Yeah, okay. up the top because yeah. the ledge was showing and that smoothed yeah. out. It's wow. not as much of a dip now. And he did some on a uh, townhouse and he, he had only some big stuff. He put it in and he called me on a Friday afternoon and said, I know this isn't done. You're going to get calls. This is too big. It's too rough. I've got some much smaller stuff coming in. Um, and I very shortly thereafter got several calls saying, yikes, but uh, I haven't been up, but I think it, I think it's been fixed now and is, and uh, is good. But, so basically Zach's been doing most of my mm -hmm. close up room work. Mm -hmm. Dogs? I have been um, texting with the news. Hopefully that will happen. <laughs> if it doesn't, I would guess I'll have to pay Eric again to. Yeah, uh, you might. I think. I think. I'm not sure. I don't know if Steve pulls them out for Dexter or they're using their town's equipment. Mm -hmm. Steve put that ramp in, so Steve might pull them for you. I don't know. He's worth a call too in a gym. Okay. Also, if the grading thing is. If you need two people or three, you might. Yep. I mean, if the window's small, yeah. we just need to get them done. All right, I can reach out to Steve too. I hadn't reached out to anybody else because everybody has been hugely, hugely busy. Yep. I'm like, yep. If I can get just one person to, <laughs> I'll be lucky. But yeah, I'll, I'll reach out if it turns out that. Yeah, the docks. <laughs> Well, you can pull that now with your tractor. Nice cab and everything. Yeah. We have some more. Well, right now. John might be able to take the loader down. Hey, you go. <laughs> Just hook on to it. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, and if you wreck that dog. And, mm. Well, that's all they've been, that's for years, that's all they've done. Oh, they just hook on to him, drag him up out of there with a the loader. Yikes. I mean, it'd be so nice to have a set of long tines on them. And, Unpin each section and pick, pick them one up, up, set it down, yeah. pick it up, stack them up. So destroy them. Mm. Yeah. As long as they're not cutting them out of the ice, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, correspondence, main DOT. They sent me an email saying that. Um, Main DOT is planning a highway resurfacing ultra thin bonded wearing surface project at the following location. On Route 23, beginning 2.99 miles north of the Dexter Sangerville town line and extending northerly 3.74 miles to the intersection 
of Route 6, Route 15, and Slash 16. So I just wanted to let you know that's supposed to happen next summer. Oh. Good. They just wanted to know that we didn't have any um, utilities in. So I, did, I just reached out to the sewer and water district and said they talked to you too, and they said, "Oh yeah, we we've, we've sent our stuff in." So that is on the agenda for next next summer. Next summer. That's it for correspondence. Mm -hmm. Request for additional agenda items. Selectman's concerns. No. Oh, okay. All right. Executive session? None? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's 6.35. We are adjourned.